Ben Bostek, welcome back. Good to see you. It's good to be back. How are you doing today? Uh, doing well. Try, trying to figure out all these cross currents in the economy. Are you still thinking one and done when it comes to a May interest rate increase? So one for sure. That's my baseline for this year. You know, I've been at this point for, for quite some time. The economy is still has a lot of momentum and is performing quite strongly. And inflation remains too high. You know, before I came down to the studio here, I took a look at our underlying inflation dashboard. And by pretty much every measure that you look at, uh, current inflation is more than double what our target is. So there's still more work to be done, and I'm ready to do it. Yeah, so the question now becomes what happens after May? Are you leaning toward more hikes? staying put? So my baseline is to hold. I, I, yeah. I think that uh, after the next move, uh, if, the, if the data come in as I expect, uh, we will be able to hold there for quite some time. Now, you know, I've been saying for a while, I don't think that inflation is going to come down quickly. Uh, it's going to take uh, some effort and a resoluteness on our part. So once we get to that point, I don't have us really doing anything uh, but monitoring the economy for the rest of this year and into 2024. What factors would make you consider an interest rate cut? Because the market is now expecting that in the back half of, of this year. Yeah, I know. Uh, part of this is really about the pace of inflation uh, returning back to our 2% target. You know, I, I don't think that's going to happen as quickly as some of the markets do. And it seems that um, the question is, who's right on this? I think that we've made a lot of movement in the last several months. Uh, but now the hard part happens. You know, uh, at the beginning of this year, we were, people were talking about has inflation plateaued at a level? Uh, and I think those concerns are, are still uh, in my mind uh, for sure. And we're just going to have to see the pace that it comes down. I don't, I don't see it coming down below maybe three and a half. And three and a half is still well above our 2% target. So as I said, there's a lot of work to do. We're going to have to just stay on top of it. Uh, and, and this is one instance where I actually hope I'm wrong. But I don't think I am at this point. Well, there's also this question, President Bostic, about, about how much inflation is just here to stick around because of things like nearshoring and security risks and ESG. President Lagarde of the European Central Bank this week talking about how the, the U.S.-China trade tensions are ultimately inflationary. Do you agree? Well, you know, I think it's still an open question. You know, folks in my building remind me all the time there's a difference between a one-time shift in, in, a, in a price level and underlying inflation. And so you're, the nearshoring may actually lead to a different price basis. But that's different than saying that we're going to fundamentally see escalation continue at elevated levels moving into the future. We're just going to have to see how these economies play out. And, and I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that inflation mm -hmm. has a new baseline or benchmark in terms of uh, the number that we should be using as our target. What about the economy? Because that's the other, the other piece of this. What, where are you right now on recession expectations as soon as this year? Well, I don't have recession as, as my baseline outlook. Look, throughout this entire pandemic experience, the last two or three years, the economy has continued to be extremely resilient and it's continued to perform better than pretty much everyone expected. Uh, I don't know why, well, I don't think that we're going to see a whole lot different in that regard which is another reason why I'm really comfortable holding at our restrictive level for quite some time as that energy of the economy uh, really starts to, to be wrung out and we get more into balance. You know, part of the challenge we have right now is that we have an economy that aggregate demand is extremely strong and we're going to have to see some weakening, uh, but we just not have not seen weakening happen at, at very large increments. And yes. uh, I'm hopeful that that will continue as we go through the year. So we have an orderly return to balance and back to our 2% target. But you know, I don't have to tell you the long and variable lags of monetary policy. So, so you think the economy can withstand, what, 550 basis points of tightening, high inflation into an inverted yield curve and not go into recession? Well, I want to, I want to uh, correct you on that first thing. While there has been 500, 500 25 basis points of, of I was increase. Adding May. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, but all of that has not been in the restrictive space, right? So the first 300 or 350 basis points of that was basically taking the foot off the gas and moving out of accommodative into restrictive. 
So if you think about what, what we are going to need to see, we're going to need to see slowdown. And slowdown is going to require putting uh, your foot on the brakes, if you will. Uh, we've only moved into that territory over the last, you know, starting in the fall. Uh, and so there is still a lot of work that's going to go through our policy. And that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I think uh, one more move should be enough for us to then take a step back and see how our policy is flowing through the economy uh, to understand the extent to which inflation is returning back to our target. There's also the bank issues, and we've been covering the, the bank earnings today and last week extensively. We'll get more regionals. But from your perspective, is the, the bank stress over? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a bank regulator, so yeah. I get paid to worry about this. And so it, I never think of this over, over. What I will say is that the acute tensions uh, seem to be uh, residing 